Okay, good night, everyone. How are you? It's been a long week, hasn't it? For some of you, it may have been. For me, it was. So, you know, but God is good. He has brought me safely through. And we're now into a new week. And um, I'm here with tonight's Words of Pearls. And uh, it's entitled Betrayed by a Broken Promise. Once again, my name is Florencia Chang-Ajita. And you can find me on my YouTube channel as Flo Chang-Ajita. All righty. Um, as I said, uh, betrayed by a broken promise. You know, I was reading the recount of Jacob's son, Judah, and what he did. You can find that, by the way, in Genesis 38. Yeah, Genesis 38. What he did was uh, he had three sons, Er, Onan, and uh, the other name begins with an S. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, it's the scripture. Ah, uh, Shelah. Uh, Shelah. Yeah. And so what he did was uh, Er, his first son, married a woman named Tamar. Now, Tamar uh, and the first son, the first son, the Bible said he was very wicked. Whatever he did, God was displeased. And so the Bible says, and the Lord killed him. That's the word of God. You can read it for yourself. He was evil. And anyway, so he had um, now, because he died, uh, Judah gave the second son, Onan, to Tamar and told Onan that he should sire a child with um with uh, Tamar just to, so he gave, you know, him as her husband and they were supposed to have children. The child, first child that she had, you know, would honor his brother's, who uh, would honor his brother and be his brother's legacy. Now he didn't want to do that. So um, the Bible, and this is for adults, the Bible said he pulled out and spilled his seed on the ground. You figure it out. Anyway, um, and he kept doing that, and the Lord was displeased, and so he also died. Now, the the other son, Shalab, was younger, and the, the father probably... Now, you know, there are many sides. <laughs> well, there are more than one sides. So think of it from Tamar's point of view, is that she was promised this child that when he grew up, when he became a man, the father would give him to her for them to be wedded, right? That she would become his wife and he'd become her husband. Um, and so he sent her home, back to her home, to her parents, where she would wait for this younger brother to grow up to manhood, right? And um, while she's waiting, she's she's waiting. She she wears her widow's garb. She's more, you know, she she doesn't wear any other kind of clothing. But everything that she wears tells that she's in mourning, right? She had to be in mourning for quite a while, um, and she's waiting with hope. No, she's in mourning and waiting with right, hoping, uh, believing the promise that was made to her. And then from the father's vantage point, well, he gave two of his sons and he's like, you know, they both died. So apparently he's blaming this woman that she's a cause that his sons died. Well, I think he never um, had a conversation with God because I'm quite sure God would have let him know that his sons were the ones that were a fault. It was because of the evil that they did, why they died and not because the woman was some kind of a curse or ill omen, however one wants to look at it, right? So um, there she is, she's waiting. The father is like, yeah, no, not giving my son to her. Not at all, not happening. And she's waiting. And in the meantime, the Bible said his wife had passed. And so now he's a widow. 
<laughs> right? He's left without a wife. So uh, the word of God said he was going to go to a place, whatever he was going for. Um, um, where was he going? He was going to uh, Timnah. And Timna is a place of forbidding or, you know, so it's clearly someplace you shouldn't have gone. But anyway, someone told her that they, your father-in-law is going up to this place. And, uh, you know, she also heard that the son had grown up, but here it was, he never contacted her. So he's reneged on his promise, right? He has betrayed her right he's betraying her right not telling her like no my kid has grown up but you know so anyway she found out and she took off her her widow's garb and she um she went to uh she pretended to be a prostitute and of course there he was he solicited her services now She's a smart woman because he promised her a goat and whatever else he promised. But she was like, you know what? I'm not taking your empty promise. And it was a good thing she didn't because he betrayed her the first time in promising his son to her, but he didn't come through. So this time she's not taking his word that, yeah, you're going to give me a goat like after you slept with me and left. Yeah. Mm. It's happening. No, it's not. So she's like, listen, you have to give me some kind of collateral, right? Let me hold on to something for you. And so she took his seal and his walking stick, which was identifiably his, like nobody else had it. That was his seal, his walking stick. And so she went back home and put on back her widow's garb. And then it came to his attention that she had gone to be a prostitute and got pregnant and oh by the way he did keep his promise and sent his friend with the payment but when the friend went he couldn't locate her because she wasn't uh, a prostitute she was not right she only pretended to be one and so she did get pregnant and uh, there she was, she was pregnant. And plus, you know, they said she pretended to, no, she had, you know, uh, in, the way she got pregnant was by becoming a prostitute. And so this in the culture at the time meant death. So he called for her to be killed, but as God would have it, this wise woman had his, she had what the today is called the receipts, right? She had the evidence then of um, that he was the one that indeed did get her pregnant. And, you know, um, let me just read this part <laughs> that I have to, yeah, hold on one second. Let me get this because I have to read this in your hearing. She did what, uh, this is what he said when he found out, when he was confronted, right? And you thought, especially in that culture, you thought for sure, for sure that she was probably going to be killed, but no, um, not at all. And he said, that she is more righteous than I am because I didn't arrange for my son to marry my for her to marry my son Sheila. And so the thing is, at least she was honorable. He wasn't. And you know, in a simple act like that. And you know, today you may feel that you're betrayed. Someone promised you something. Like um, sometimes people get engaged. That's a promise to marry. And then the person breaks off the engagement and goes and marries someone else, right? Or, you know, someone promised to do something for you or, you know, and they renege, right? And there you are waiting. And it can be sometimes a matter of life and death. And the person 
reneges on the promise. And then what? But you know what? God will never, ever renege on his promise. When he promises you something, he will come through for you. You can trust him. The thing is, sometimes we don't have the patience to wait on God. Or we, you know, there are times when the enemy of our souls place doubts in our hearts and our minds and, 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 and to make us think that, wait a minute, you think God will really come through for you? Yes, he will. Oh, yes. You know, there are times when we should doubt our doubts, right? Or fast, fe yeah, fast from our doubts, right? Instead of feasting on the doubt, believe God over the enemy then, or over the thing that is um, always presenting itself before you that is total, the total opposite of what God has promised you. Whatever he promises you, God is faithful and just. He's truth. So he will come tr through for you, right? So you can trust God. So as I said before, if you feel that you've been betrayed by a promise, by someone making you a promise, and you do not see it coming into fruition, first of all, when, when a person makes you a promise, you know, human flesh can fail. Sometimes, the, uh, a person breaking a promise may not be a deliberate thing. It may be something that is out of their control, right? Um, things happen. Someone can promise you something, even promise to loan you some money or to give you some money. And then something happened where they no longer have what they promised to give to you. And they come to you and tell you, uh, and, and you get upset. Don't be upset if they tell you that, you know, that you should turn around and pray, you know, pray for God to help them, right? So, but um, there are those, there are people who are not true to their word. They make false promises. They live false lives. And you have to have the discernment to know that you can't believe everything that everyone tells you. And so, so that way you won't be let down. Now, when you bring the thing to the Lord, guess what? He'll let you know, like, this is a person I've sent to help you, right? If not, come on, God is bigger than that, right? So no matter what it is you're going through, if you've been betrayed by a promise and it hurts, it's painful, especially if it's, you know, if it's... Uh, something that you 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 really truly expected like you're engaged to be married everybody knows about it you plan the wedding there are those we've heard about that we've read about that we might know someone that that has happened to right and 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 so you you know in that case and if you're that person you you know you have to turn to your village to see you through that but you will get through that because it is not it will not destroy you it is it, it's, it's shameful it's painful but it will not that doesn't dictate or determine the rest of your life it doesn't mean that um you're going to live in shame for the rest of your life because when you give it to the lord guess what he'll honor you and many times sometimes you know there are times when relationships end and you think whoa what's happening but guess what? You don't realize you're really dodging a bullet and you, you'll later on realize it, right? And you'll give thanks. You might even do a dance, right? But the thing is, we don't think to praise God at the time, especially if you're a child of God. We don't think to praise God to say, you know what? You didn't let this deal come through. That's also that. It, you could be, it could be a contracted deal. It could be that you're buying a house and the deal fell through. It could be a, a business contract and it fell through. And then you later found out, wait, the person is imprisoned, right? Or the house that you were supposed to purchase that didn't go through. The foundation wasn't good. The, the sewage system, there was some major issues that would have cost you a lot of money that you then wouldn't have had that would have put you in debt or worse, made you buy a house that you could end up losing. So we have to trust God in the small details as well as the large details. Some of you may have lost children and um, 
to pain no one except God can comfort. However, if he allows it, he who is faithful, he who gives you a child, he who chooses you to be the parent, if he allows it, then no, there has to be a reason behind it. And not blame yourself, not live in guilt, not live mourning, you know, the loss of that unborn child. Although you mourn, you grieve, go through that period and then stop because that you're doing a disservice to yourself and also to your womb, to your body, to your seed and to the rest of children to come. And no, they're not replacing that one. No, you have a special place for that one. But, you know, you give thanks that God is there for you and will allow you to have other children. And so, you know, sometimes things are really difficult. We have, there are difficult moments that you may face, like, as I said, with a broken promise, but know that God who is faithful and just, he never breaks a promise. And just all you have to do is give him your broken promises, the ones that were made or in the motion or being made and the ones that fizzled through, you go to him, give them to him and thank him that he's there with you to bring you through and to bring you into a better place and to know that he will provide better for you, right? A better house, a better contract, whatever it is. And, you know, where children are concerned, not comparing them. When Job lost his children, the Bible said the next set, his daughters were the fairest in the land. So it's not a matter that the child that was coming wasn't going to be fair or what. You never know. But that's an unknown that you have to entrust to God for him to heal that space, heal that place, heal your heart, heal that loss, and trust him to know that when he blesses you with others, that they will be such a blessing that will be, bring so much joy to you, you know? And so, you know, um, whatever it is you're going through, as I said, whatever your broken promise may have been, trust God. Sometimes the broken promises are friendships where you were a friend with someone and, you know, it ended. Give thanks too. Yeah, sometimes we don't want to. Let me tell you something. I've been there. Sometimes you think you know a person and you realize they may even hype you up. They speak through both sides of their mouths. They say beautiful things in front of you and behind you. They're throwing daggers, but thank God for the armor of God that puts out those daggers and blocks those daggers. Glory to God. But you have to ask God to open your eyes so you can see them. So you know, you know how to deal with people and you don't have to let it get you down. But you're like, thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes to that, that truth. Thank you, Lord, for showing me who they are, right? So, you know, the one thing I want to say, you could trust God. Tamar, she trusted God. She did what she needed to do. She ended up with twins. Look at that. Two husbands she had, right? Both died because of their evil ways. She ended up getting two boys. Go read it for yourself. Read Genesis 38 and trust God. He may even give you a greater revelation for you personally when you read it. So anyway, have yourself a wonderful night and know that this new day has begun. And in this new day, let the light of Christ lead you into goodness, into hope, into strength, and into joy. Because a merry heart does good as a medicine. Love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves one of us so much more. <laughs>